several occasions, like, the cookies they tasted, like, you could say kind of funky, like, they had a weird taste to them. Police started investigating teacher Mark Burnt in 2010 after a film developer allegedly found photos of him with children, his own students, aged 6 to 10, blindfolded and in bondage poses. Miramonte Elementary suspended Burnt while police investigated. When Burnt was arrested and news broke of his charges, there was outrage. He was also accused of feeding children cookies tainted with his own DNA. Miramonte took drastic action, replacing the entire school staff. But how did it get this bad? The child predators lurking in the very place where children should be the safest school. Joining me now is Brian Claypool. He is representing the boy's family in a civil suit against Mark Burnt and his former employer, the Los Angeles Unified School District. Brian, this seemed like a, a, a lovely family and really desperate for some sort of answers. Yeah. Dr. Drew, here's, here's the problem. Up until now, there's been a perfect storm in place at the Los Angeles Unified School District. You, you have a spineless, cowardly school district who put their self-interest and their public image above the safety and welfare of these kids. You combine that with a powerful teachers union that negotiates this favorable contract that makes it difficult to remove teachers. And then on top of that, you've got a low to middle income group of families with a cultural barrier. Perfect recipe for this. Not only a cultural barrier, as I understand, but a certain amount, two, two things. There was not just a cultural barrier, but a cultural bias to believe teachers and put your faith in teachers and not question them, right? And secondly, a cultural barrier against coming forward because some of them were worried about being outed by the uh, immigration service, as I understand. Right, absolutely. First of all, I mean, the, the most predominantly Hispanic community, they teach their kids to honor students or to honor teachers, to really? be respectful. To, to love their teachers. Right, yeah. I, I, right, and, and believe your teacher. Yeah. And they, and they treat their teachers almost as, as parental figures. Right. So imagine being a child and you're supposed to run to the principal's office and report somebody you perceive to be like a fatherly figure. Yeah, you wouldn't even know what to think. You right. would think it was your fault, of course. That's right. All right, now to protect the identity of this young alleged victim and his father, we've changed their names, blurred their faces, and distorted their voices. And we're calling the victim Alex. He's now a teenager. Mark Burnt was his former third grade teacher at Miramonte Elementary School. We're going to give the father, uh, Paul's father, no, Alex's father, the name Paul. I, I keep screwing that up. Paul, of course, also has two older, older children who were also students of Mark Burnt. So I started out by asking Paul about his family's history with Mr. Burnt. Watch this. I, I met him 25 years ago with my first child. He's 32 now, and he had him as a teacher also. And that's how I met him. He, he was a great man. A real great man. He never gave me no indications of anything. I. He was like a brother to me. I I trusted him. I. He was well liked by my family. All the time we used to go to the pier. And the kids will say, "Dad, Doctor, Mr. Bird is there." Well, let's go say hi to him. You know. He would always hug my kids. He would always put arm around them and pat them, including myself. He would pat my back and, you know squeeze my hand and you know always giving me good compliments about my my kids and never never seen anything wrong with it you know i thought he went beyond his his teaching uh, work just to be around the kids you know never gave me no indication whatsoever he was doing something wrong although i, I obviously i talked to the dad quite a bit more than that and he said he did have a kind of a funny feeling about him and that one time he ran he'd see him drinking at the pier i don't know which pier santa monica pier or, i think it was in redondo in Beach. redondo pier and uh, they actually invited dad to have a beer with him which is a little bit of a weird boundary thing for somebody that's had kids in his classroom for decades this was mr burns mo this is how he he gained the trust of the parents and and, and the children by, by inviting them into social uh, environments that I think are completely beyond the boundary of what a teacher should be doing with parents. Right. Now, people, again, um, our reporter here, uh, Jacqueline Hurtado, she has sort of educated me about how that community would view their teachers. Now, the bound boundaries are naturally a little looser in that culture, and you're saying he just took advantage of that fact. It's the ultimate betrayal. This is, the, this is, in, this is insane, to be honest with you. I mean, I mean, in order for Burnt to carry this out, he had to gain everybody's trust. He can only be carrying out these these abusive acts on the kids if he has them in, in good standing. Yeah, exactly. Groomed properly. Now I also asked Alex about his impression of Mr. Burnt as a teacher. Take a look at this. Oh, he was Mr. Burnt was like a real laid back teacher, like one of those cool teachers like who you look forward to going to his class every day. 
I understand he had sort of favorites in the class, good, yes. you know, people he thought were good kids, I guess. Were you one of the good kids? Yes, I was one of the good kids. What did that mean? Well, like I said, on Fridays, like, you would have little prizes for the kids who were good, and, like, the good kids, you would have, you would blindfold them and give them prizes. Did you ever see any behavior that, in retrospect, concerns you? Um, not really. Well, I was in third grade. I didn't really tell what was right from wrong right then. Yeah, they were just, they were third grade kids, but my question would be, were the kids that were the good kids the one he was really grooming? Were those the ones? Yes, Mr. Burnt carried this out only on the good kids. In fact, he posted in his classroom a list up on the wall and, and labeled the good kids. And those are the ones, is that, but the ones that are now coming forward with allegations, are they the ones that, all the ones that appeared on that list typically? Yes, all of the kids we are representing are kids who are labeled as good kids to Mr. Burnt. That's the only way he could carry this out. Now, one of the things Alex was concerned about was Mr. Burnt's health, whether he'd been exposed to something. Do we know anything about that? Well, Alex has been tested. We don't have the results back, but we did facilitate him being tested. And we are trying to get answers on Mr. Burnt being tested as well. We'd like to have him tested. And one of the most disturbing allegations against Mark Burnt is that he fed cookies to students that were tainted with his DNA. Now, I asked Alex about those cookies. Take a look. Was there anything peculiar about these cookies, again, in retrospect? Well, yeah, like, on several occasions, like, the cookies, they tasted, like, because they kind of funky. Like, they had a weird taste to them. And now are you concerned that you might have been exposed to some of those terrible allegations, those horrible behaviors? I'm, I'm very concerned about it. Like, hopefully, like, I um, wasn't exposed to it, but we have to have to see what's happening. There's been fear among some of the students of a sexually transmitted disease even. Do you have those kinds of fears? I have those kinds of fears also. Like, I try not to think about these fears as much because I want to keep my mind off of it. I want to stay focused, like, in school. I want to keep my mind settled and off the topic. And Brian, it is so easy to go off like a Roman candle with this story. I'm, I'm on the verge of, like, complete outrage all the time. And then I think to myself, well, <laughs> Do we know for sure this happened? I mean, after all, it was just DNA found in the cookies. Maybe it was from his hand when he handed them the cookies. What other evidence is there? First of all, Burnt was playing Russian roulette with, with the lives of these kids. And here's what, how we can show it. We have two kids that we're representing that saw Mr. Burnt in the classroom with his hand in his groin area. Then, then she sees him lift his hand up, and she sees a white substance in his hand. And get this, mm -hmm. he then takes a Ziploc bag and he puts it in a Ziploc bag, zips the bag, and puts it in a little lunchbox. We also have two girls that were lured into his classroom. And Burnt asked them to carry boxes for him. And the girls looked into the boxes, and guess what was in there? The bags? No, three test tubes with a white, gooey substance in the test tubes. So you tell me that that was not Mr. Burnt's bodily fluid in those test tubes, in that plastic bag that he used to, to lace in those cookies to feed those kids to feed his sadistic pleasure. Was, it, was he making money off the pictures or something? Was, I mean, it's just, is it pure sadism? It's, he's been doing this for 20 years. Remember, he was first reported in, in 1991, 1994. In my opinion, this man is a pervert. He, he, this is a well, sadistic I'm, pleasure. I'm, I'm, if that's what happened, I mean, there's no doubt about that, but it's almost, well, it's almost yeah. incomprehensible. But hold on, I'm, I'm going to sure. take a break, and I want to talk about those earlier allegations, too, when we get back. So we also have more from our exclusive interview. As Paul fights for answers, he's worried about his son's future, of course. Watch this. Me as an adult, I could, I could bear with it and try to move along with it, but my son at this, at this age, I'm concerned about him. You know, it's, it's going to take a lot for him to get over it. My entire family, where, where we feel that we've been betrayed.